I went from a broke college student to working at Microsoft and earning $11,000 per month. And today I'm gonna to share with you exactly how I did that. Now, not only will I share the exact things that I did to get there, but I'll also give you a full playbook on how you can do it yourself no matter how much experience you have. A quick intro here. My name is Tim. I run a large YouTube channel called Tech with Tim, where I now have over 1600 YouTube videos teaching people programming. It's not just, you know, career related stuff like this video. It's actually technical deep dives into coding tutorials, learning Python APIs, you know, AI tools, all of that kind of stuff. Now in this video, I'm going to essentially just tell you the story kind of raw and unfiltered on how I actually landed this role at Microsoft because it definitely wasn't conventional and it's not something that my university degree, which I don't have because I dropped out of the program, helped me do. Okay, let's get into this story here. Now I started coding back when I was just 12 years old. That might sound crazy to people, but that was me. You know, imagine little Tim sitting in his room, essentially learning HTML, CSS, Python, JavaScript before this was even a big thing or before the internet had, you know, a ton of great resources. The reason I got into that is I was always the kid who was like, you know, jailbreaking the iPhone or hacking the school computer, like kind of, you know, not a crazy nerdy kid, but definitely like in that group where I liked technology. I was super curious. You know, I would ask tons of questions. That was me. Like, I just loved how things worked and to figure those things out. And when I kind of got my hand on my first computer, it was just a really natural evolution to start diving into coding. So I spent a few years just as a kid kind of doing this as a hobby on the side, building some projects, making some small websites. By no means was I a genius. I wasn't the guy, you know, you see in the newspaper building an app at 14 years old. I was just doing it for fun. It's something that I enjoy. Then I got into high school and I started a computer science class. In that class, I realized quite quickly that I was really good at this. I excelled in this field and this is something I really wanted to do. So I started pursuing it. And this led me to actually land a job at a summer camp where I started teaching coding to kids. Don't worry, this background is going to make a lot of sense when we actually get to the part where I landed role at Microsoft. But essentially at this summer camp, I created this kind of coding specialty, which the director was looking for to teach kids between 10 and 14 years old how to code in Python. So I developed the whole curriculum and I filmed a bunch of videos that I ended up posting on YouTube, which is kind of the start of the Tech With Tim YouTube channel, which is my other channel, which kind of got me into all of this. Um, and anyways, we'll, we'll kind of skip through that. But the point is that was super rewarding. I loved doing that. And I taught a bunch of kids how to code effectively, you know, that that's the moral of that. That led me to eventually getting into university. I was studying computer science. I was going to the University of Ottawa in Canada. And I realized quite quickly, like, this is a massive waste of time. I'm pretty good at programming already. You know, I've done this for a long time. I've written a bunch of code. I've built a bunch of projects and I'm in these, you know, programming classes and we're learning nothing or I'm forced to take like psychology or do all of this math. And then I'm paying, you know, 15, $20,000 per year and essentially having all of my time wasted. Now, eventually through this program, I was in the co-op program, which means, you know, you try to get an internship after a year or so uh, in the program. And that's kind of through the school. They had this big portal, you know, I applied for the internships, I applied to hundreds of different positions and I effectively got nothing. Even though I was objectively, you know, really qualified, I had a lot of skills, I was definitely above like a junior level, no one cared. My resume was great, no one wanted to hire me. And this is what led me to actually being able to get a job at Microsoft and eventually dropping out of this program. But quickly, I'm, I'm sure this probably sounds, you know, relatable to a lot of you, especially if you're in a computer science degree right now. Back then, I really wished that I just had a mentor someone that was a few years ahead of me that had already gone through what I did and they would have just saved me a massive amount of time. I probably never would have went to school. I probably would have got a job significantly faster and I probably would have made just way more money at a younger age having that kind of advice. Now that's exactly why I have a program called DevLaunch. Now I put this together with two other software engineers, one of which worked at Google and Amazon, the other which currently runs a large startup and is working at kind of a more matured startup company. And we all realize the exact same thing. So we created DevLaunch to essentially be that mentorship program for people like you that are watching this video to help you accelerate in your career and more importantly, just land a job. Because today, landing a job is completely disconnected skill from actually being good at programming. We realized that and that really no one's teaching like how to get a job skills, which is exactly what we focus on there. Anyways, if it's interesting, I'll leave a link in the description. But that's kind of when I started to realize this is, you know, an important area to focus on. Now, continuing, right? So I was going through this internship process. I wasn't getting anything. Like, no one's replying to me. I think I got one single interview after like hundreds of applications and that didn't even end up leading to a job. So what I did is I continued posting on my YouTube channel. I was kind of growing it slowly at this point and somehow I actually got a sponsorship from Microsoft. Small amount of money. They're paying me to make a quick video, you know, promote some Microsoft service. So I did that and then I was just sitting in my room one day, you know, 19 years old thinking, you know what? Like I need an internship. I don't have one for the summer right now. 
let me just send them a message and see like if they have anything. So I sent the guy a message. I said, hey, you know, I hope the video is doing well. By the way, I'm currently looking for an internship. You know, I'm in computer science. Do you have anything? Like, do you, is there anyone you could connect me with? And by some luck, he ended up connecting me with university recruiter. They set up a quick screening call. And now I'll dive into more of the details of how I landed this job because this is where I started to discover the world of big tech. And to be honest, this is kind of the pinnacle of my life and where everything really changed for the better. Now, at this point, I you know, was not doing a bunch of interviews. I had no idea what lead code was. I had no clue what interview prep looked like. I didn't even know like, what does a job at Microsoft look like? I, I haven't even studied this thing. So I go to this uh, screening call. It's like a 20, 25 minute call with this kind of younger woman from, from Microsoft. And she's like, okay, so we, you know, we talk for 10 minutes. We go over my resume. She says, by the way, I want to give you like a quick coding screen. So I'm like, okay, I have no idea what to expect here we hop into this kind of little editor online and she asked me like some pretty basic question like find if you know you can make a word based on these letters that we give you by some luck i'm able to pass this by doing no preparation and they schedule me for an interview about 45 days later where they're flying me from ottawa where i currently lived to seattle washington this is where the headquarters well redmond washington where the headquarters of microsoft lies now first of all how did I even get past this screening round? Let's kind of stop here because most people don't even pass this round. Now, I was really fortunate that when I was in school and just when I was coding in general, I spent a lot of time actually writing code. I built a ton of projects. I built stuff that was actually useful. For example, one of the projects on my resume was a neuroevolution of augmented topologies algorithm. That sounds crazy, but essentially it's just like fancy machine learning algorithm to play the game of Flappy Bird. And back then Flappy Bird was super known. So it was kind of an interesting project that hadn't been done that many times that was unique on my resume. I had some experience, right? I had worked at, uh, what is it? The summer camp teaching coding. But other than that, you know, I was pretty fresh. Uh, but I showed kind of that passion, right? And that's why they even were considering bringing me in. And then I had a little bit of a personal brand with the YouTube channel, but that's what you know enabled me to get into the door. Now, if you don't have that, there's still a lot of other ways that you can stand out, but think about the reason why I was able to get that opportunity, right? I actually had someone review my profile. For almost everyone that I talked to, they actually have like a pretty decent profile if they're serious about getting a dev job, right? They've built a few decent projects, their resume's okay, they might have some experience or something that's like relatable to software development. The issue is that no one ever looks at their resume. If you simply got 10 people to actually read through your resume, they would probably give you a chance, right? Maybe someone would call you in for an interview, but they never even get to that phase. Now that's something that is difficult to do, but it's something we focus on a lot in dev launch. Essentially, how do you get in front of the hiring manager? How do you make those connections? And how do you kind of network your way in, even if you don't know anyone into these types of companies? Because the only way I was able to get this Microsoft job is because I had some kind of little connection, right? I didn't even know if they had any jobs. I literally just knew a single person that worked at Microsoft that I had done one video for, we hardly communicated, and that was enough to essentially change my entire life. So anyways, I know that's kind of a quick tangent there, but that's why I even had this opportunity, right? Anyway, so we go through the screening call, I pass this question, they schedule me for the interview, and now I start racing. All right, what do I need to do to actually prep for this Microsoft job? Again, I had no idea, like no clue whatsoever. And had I known before, I would have been a lot more prepared, but I start to realize like, okay, at these big tech companies, they ask this like lead code question. Okay, what's lead code? Do -do 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 computer, lead code. All right, I just need to do a shit ton of these lead code questions. Start doing a bunch of them. I find out about another platform, Algo Expert, which I end up working for later on in life. Point is I go through all these questions. I just grind this lead code. I spend literally 45 days, just every single day doing two or three of these problems and just trying to conceptualize these things and just study as much as I can for like what I'm about to receive um, in this interview. And again, I, I really have no idea what to expect. I've just done a little bit of research online. Now, one thing I will say is that when I was practicing these questions, I was really fortunate that I read through a ton of articles. I looked through a bunch of guides and I realized that I was probably gonna have to code on a whiteboard. So what I did is I actually bought a whiteboard and for the kind of latter half of my practice, I started actually coding out live on the whiteboard where what I would do is I would take the question from the computer I would like read it, understand it. And then I would start simulating like what I was actually going to have to do in the real interview environment where I would have my friend like sit on my bed and watch me, or I would pretend like someone was there. I would say, okay, so we're going to do this. And I would sound like a crazy person, right? But I would be practicing like I play. That's the number one tip that I can give you when you're going into these coding cell interviews, which is very common at these large tech companies, you need to simulate the environment. 
if you just do the questions, that's helpful, of course, but it's not what's going to get you all the way because a lot of times you're being evaluated on communication, how likable you are, how well you present your solution, how well you talk through your code. Most people suck at that. That's the number one thing that most people fail. So the more you practice that, the more you're going to stand out. And even if you don't do super well on the question, you can still make a lot of progress and give yourself a chance by being good in those other areas. Anyways, point is here, I do a massive amount of practice, right? I get as prepared as I possibly can be. And then it's time for the interview. So for the interview, I have to fly from Ottawa to um, Seattle, essentially. And then I have to rent a car and I have to drive to Redmond, Washington. Anyways, I get into Seattle. I think I have like one night right when I arrive where I can like rest. And then the next morning, it's like right into the interview. So I get to the hotel, you know, I have some food, whatever. I look at the city a little bit and then boom, right back to practice. You know, I do two questions at night before I go to bed, wake up nice and early, have a healthy breakfast, do another question as practice. And then I have a rental car at this point, even though I'm 19 years old and I'm driving through, you know, Seattle in a city I've never been to. To hoping I don't crash as I go to the Redmond office, which is like maybe a 20 minute drive away. I get there, you know, bright and early, 8.30 a.m. I think, and I kind of sit in the lobby for about 30 minutes waiting for someone to come get me. And then they, you know, start walking me through the office. So I go through the office, I go upstairs to this room. There's this massive big whiteboard. I think I have a really crap photo I can put on screen of it. Uh, and then the interview rounds begin. And I have three interviews. These are three technical interviews. They're all coding style questions. Someone comes in, they sit with you for about 10 minutes. They ask you a bunch of questions about your resume, ask you about your experience. Why do you want to work on the team? Blah, blah, blah. And then, okay, cool. Get on the whiteboard, start coding, right? And then they ask you a question and you got to code it out. So I get asked a question. Fortunately, the first one's not too difficult. The guy hints me a little bit to the solution. Looks like I passed that one. I'm not really sure. Guy leaves. Next guy comes right in. No brick. Just next person jumps right in. And the thing you'll realize about these interviews is that they get progressively more difficult. And my understanding is they tell you there could be up to three rounds. But if you don't pass one of the earlier rounds, they may not even waste time going to the next ones and you may get eliminated right away. So I was under the impression that if I was seeing the next interviewer, that meant that I had some, you know, hope of potentially getting this job, but also understanding, you know, in these situations, it is a bit of luck too. You can prepare as much as you want, but you never know what you're going to get asked. Second guy comes in, same situation as the first. He's more senior. I ask him some questions about his position. It's clear that he's, you know, been working longer essentially than the first person that asked me. Starts doing the interview, boom, goes well, next person comes in. Last person comes in, this is the hiring manager, essentially the, the kind of big boss. He's the guy who leads the whole organization that I'm potentially gonna be working for. He has like you know, 30 years experience in software development. He's like in his mid fifties, gives me the hardest question so far. Thankfully, I end up getting some kind of solution. The guy's super friendly and it's kind of clear at this point that I've done well. Okay, now let me talk a little bit more detail about this interview process and kind of what you can take away from this. So first things first, I did exceptionally well in these interviews based on the feedback I received, mostly because I was likable not just because I was some prodigy genius. Like I only prepped for this for 45 days, right? Sure, I knew how to code, I could write the solutions out, but it was clear that there was some kind of rapport. People enjoyed talking with me. I was likable, I knew how to talk, I knew how to communicate, and I had prepared all of those common answers, right? Tell me about yourself. Why do you wanna work here? What do you know about Microsoft? What do you like about this team? All of that I looked at before and I knew I was going to get asked that and I had really kind of well polished answers. I also was just not awkward. I wasn't nervous. And the reason for that is that the mindset I had going into these interviews was I've prepared as much as I possibly can. If I fail this, it's not my fault. There's nothing more I could have done in the time that I was given. And that's the attitude that I always recommend to people. When you go into an interview, just remember that if you've actually put in the work, you deserve an opportunity here, right? And if you don't get it, that's not your fault. You did what you could have. You studied what you thought was going to come up. And if you get unlucky and they ask you some ridiculous question, it is what it is. You know what I mean? There's nothing more you can do. And that was the attitude I had. And it allowed me to stay really calm, got the nerves out. The first question, I was, you know, a little bit shaky, but then I kind of got out of it. And then I went through. And by the time I was in my last interview, I felt like I was already working on the team. And the guy that I was interviewing with was really collaborative. It was really easy conversation. It didn't feel like an interview. It felt like a fun problem solving exercise. And anyways, after this interview, the person who was interviewing told me essentially I did a really good job. He actually offered to tour me through the whole Microsoft campus where he walked me through a bunch of the areas. He was essentially selling kind of Microsoft at that point. And 
by then I kind of knew that I was probably going to get an offer, but I wasn't 100% sure. Flew back home. Two days later, I got that email. And then, you know, the compensation, obviously, which was quite nice back then, about 11,000 Canadian dollars per month, relocation to, you know, Seattle or to Redmond, paying all these stipends, bonuses, all of this stuff. The perks are, you know, ridiculous. And they start blasting you with emails. You get added to the intern group chats all of that kind of stuff, which is the position that, you know, I landed at that point when I was 19 years old. There's a lot more, obviously, that I could talk about, but I want to get into, again, how I was successful in this and how that opportunity came up. Essentially, I was putting myself out there, right? I had the YouTube channel. I was open to opportunities. I had a good resume in hand. I had good projects. All I really needed to do is seize that opportunity when I got it, right? Opportunity came up, boom, put in all that prep that I need to, and then land the role. That's the way that you need to look at this, right? Everything needs to be in place. It needs to be ready to go so that when an opportunity comes up, because you really never know when that's going to be, you're ready to take advantage. That's what I really focus on in DevLaunch with our students. You may not have five interviews coming up right now. We need to be ready for when they do, because we don't know when that interview is going to come up. And if you already have everything in place, you've been prepping, you know this, it's a lot less stressful than in my situation, having to do a bunch of lead code questions, having to prep, you know, a month and a half before. Fortunately, I had everything else, but imagine I had to spend three days making a resume, build a new project. It's overwhelming, right? It's way too much stuff to try to do when you're preparing for this life-changing opportunity. Now, since working at Microsoft, you know, I've gotten this essentially stamp on my resume, instant credibility. You, know, you can walk into a room and simply tell someone, you know, I used to work at Microsoft and immediately they take you a little bit seriously, right? In life, you kind of need that hook to like your elevator pitch when you're talking to people. And even now with the YouTube channel with, you know, 1.8 million subscribers, I still go back to that Microsoft experience and when I worked there and all the things that I learned. And it allows me to kind of get my foot in the door and get people to actually take me seriously. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people need to aim for early on in their career. It may not be Microsoft. It may not be, you know, massive, huge company, but you need those stamps on your resume and you need that credibility that carries you just so far in life. And again, while the money was great, I've made way more money simply because I worked at Microsoft than I did while I was working there. And I think, you know, let that sink in. Last thing I'll say about the experience, and I'll talk about this in another video is, while I worked at Microsoft, I obviously learned a lot. More importantly, I actually had a mentor. And because I worked at Microsoft, I was working with someone who had 15 plus years experience. He was actually leading the team. He ended up being my mentor. And I learned a massive amount from him and really leveled up as a developer because it showed me that the bar is not here, it's here for where you can potentially go, right? And until you meet really, really great people in your field and you learn from them, you don't even know what's possible. Anyways, the vacuum literally just started back here. I have so much as cleaning the apartment. Um, I'm gonna wrap up the video here, guys. Point is, that's how I landed the job. I hope some of those insights were useful for you. I will go more in depth on some of these topics later on the channel. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. Peace out.